Okay, welcome back to another development video. I'm going to launch an XE now because it's the first time I've been able to build one for ages. I've lowered the uh, amount of textures and the, and the resolution of them, which allows me to actually make a build again. So this one should be a lot smoother. And it will go through the pre-splash, the, pre the splash, and then uh, the main city that I was working on a long time ago. Uh, to uh, Screaming Tortoise 8, it's called. Not the previous one I've been showing, which is Topaz 11. Um, I'm not sure which one you're going to start in yet, but I'm working back on Screaming Tortoise 8 right now, so here we go. Uh, OSVR partner, that was, I uh, forget that, that'll get removed. That is shit with Razor that never really happened. Um, so what's this is the pre-splash, and it's pre-loading the next splash now. So you see uh, loading at the bottom there. And here I'm going to have a loading image, lot uh, different ones that can be picked from. And then when the splash appears, it plays some music and then uh, loads the main city behind it. So I'll just leave that on for a while until it loads the main city and then I'll skip it. But it shows that you can stream uh, things behind without, too, without any CPU hiccups. Well, theoretically, no CPU hiccups. Uh, it runs faster off an SSD, of course, but it's not on an SSD because it's too valuable. Yeah, there was a little jet there. But if you haven't seen this intro in other parts, uh, this is probably going to be the intro. But the logo looks a little bit low down. I'm not sure if that's <coughs> new or not. If I need to fix that, but uh, you can see in the bottom left it's actually currently loading the city as this happens. And this responds to music too, so uh, the, m the more uh, the music is, the faster everything goes. The more chilled the music is, the more chilled it is, out it, more chilled out it is. You can see an example of that over on the left with um, the angler fish. You might notice he's going, he goes faster and slower based on what the music is doing. And this is quite interesting to watch uh, for ages, but I'm not going to leave it on very long. But you can see there's two divers as well. I might wait till one of them shows up. And little people appear on the logo. You, you can see in the bottom right there, there's Armitage. He's one of the main stars. He's having a beard down there. You might have saw Neckbreak jumping off the E at the beginning. And there's a little pod that flies by on the, just above the E right now. It looks pr pretty cool. And underneath is a sort of prototype version of Topaz 11, the city. Actually, it's the it's the original SketchUp model that is in use in the game that I made. But it looks so decorated in the real game that you would barely notice it. Looks like a kind of prototype, um, kind of prototype plans or something. You know, that's kind of what it's meant to be, I guess. Crosshair should probably not be there in the uh, intro. You can also see uh, in the corner there, that's Mr. Tuxedo on the E. He's about to tip his hat twice, I think, and then he blows up. There you go. Hat etiquette. Hat etiquette. And you can see the rooftop where the player begins there on the right of the screen. That's actually the rooftop where you begin in Topaz which is actually modelled entirely on my own personal well on my own rooftop so it, it looks exactly the same really anyway so that is loaded oh yeah here comes the diver these are quite cool and they randomly go around uh, they're, they're not on a set path most things are not on a set path um, so you wouldn't be able to see the same uh, stuff again you could watch it for many times infinitely theoretically and after a while it goes into other cool stuff I might as well show that because I'm about close to it the camera starts uh, you know panning around the city Praying Mantis in the bottom right. And this skybox I made myself actually from, from my rooftop, so it would be 
more authentic. Added some brands and that in there on walls. It should change roughly about now, I would have thought. Don't worry, there is some real gameplay coming. Oh, that's Sticksman Green, actually. That's a kind of secret. That doesn't happen very often, that one. Yeah, I like that shot. You can actually see the player standing there. There is a way to take control of this level. But that also is a secret. And there's Neckbreak. Whoa, you see, he jumped off at the beginning and he was just going by there. That was cool. Anyway, you get the general idea. I just want to make, I'll give it one more camera change. I wanted to make something that was good enough for people to be able to sit and watch. Like, if they're bored of playing and they're just relaxing, having a beer, they could just turn it on. I remember sitting watching the GameCube, GameCube menu screen in that, in that way. And, you know, the end of races in F-Zero and things like that. If you get it right, it's uh, it's another facet of the game. The camera appears to be upside down there. I don't know uh, how often that happens. I don't know if that that meant to happen. There's that. There's another one of those pods. Yeah, I'm not sure why the camera's upside down there. Maybe I did some rare thing, or maybe it's just uh, a strange bug. Anyway, let's skip that. So we're in now the current state of... Um, is that music still going? No. We're in, we're in the current state of ST8. It's uh, a lot more improved. I haven't actually rebaked the light for a few days, but it should be alright. Although there is... Uh, oh, the music is going. That's uh, going to be annoying. Um... I'm going to pause this and, uh, well, I'm just going to flip back to Windows and turn off the sound, turn down the sound at least for the game. That's not meant to happen, but uh, I only just, I'm just going to turn it off entirely, I guess. I only just linked up the intro to this level there just for this demo. You can see some of the uh, occlusion on the Escalator is a bit broken there, but apart from that, everything looks a lot nicer. It's suddenly quite dark, so it's hard to see, but um, it gets lighter and darker as you go. So I'm just going to demonstrate some of the new things. Um, people have got names, you can speak to them a bit more. Um, you can buy things from this machine. Well, you can't hear it, unfortunately, but uh, it, it's a can machine noise. And uh, you know what? I'm going to pause this and come back because this is going to be super with no sound. I'll be back in a second. Well, I'm just waiting for a build right now. I have took the intro off and uh, the splash one's off, so it'll go straight into the game. Of course, it takes forever, so I thought I'd chime in and say that. I'll be back once it's finished. In the meantime... I have myself a nice Heineken here, 10 p.m. on a Friday night. Been working uh, uh, 20 hour days on this mostly, and then sleeping for a long time. So, probably only done three or four days this week, but uh, you know, I slept, I, I was, they were very long days. Anyway, still building, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Oh, it's on the post-processing player stage. This is always good news. Because it means it hasn't crashed and it means it's about to finish. Come on. Come on, mate. You can do it. Analyzing builds. See, that's not even the build processor. That's a tool I have uh, for analyzing builds, which helps you cut down the size get under that dreaded 4 gigabyte limit which is still unfixed by the way even in 64 bit editor and executables I've been talking to the Unity guys for a long time about it and they, they sort of say it's not a bug and it won't get fixed but uh, sneakily I think they're trying to fix it because it makes the whole thing look ludicrous really 
uh, you need you need to be able to have dot asset files bigger than five gig. This one level alone clocking in at six gig, but it's splitting them up into separate asset files. I don't know why I can't just do that. You know, just stop at um, four gig and move on to a new one, like a zip or a BlackBerry. Dare I say it? Right, it's still analysing. Come on, play. I'll be back. Okay, finally. That took a while because Unity goes through a very horrible slow phase after it makes a build. Anyway, back in here. No music. And I was going to show some things off. Like this. Whoop. And there's no sound happening. Really weird. Well, that shouldn't happen either. Um, as usual, everything goes wrong. Basically, you can hear a can machine. Also, you might have noticed there's a. What the hell's going on now? There's an effect on the screen, actually. That's reserved for drinking. So, what you're meant to do is you go in here and you ask this guy. Um, for a drink and you can actually buy beers in here now so you can pick one uh, let's say we'll pick Pegswood and he actually well he, he doesn't serve a beer properly do you it just appears toyed over that for a long time it just doesn't work you need a real animation studio to uh, do something like that oh it's that one over there so you, it, it kind of just appears and floats like that and you can actually see the beer goes down it's not meant to go down until you touch it but it just goes down at the moment but you can actually drink the beers, technically, and they keep coming. And you can see the camera goes all weird as you drink and get more and more drunk. And eventually you, um, you drink 20 pints of it and you, you unlock the beer. Which means you don't have to keep drinking it anymore. Because actually drinking the beer upgrades you. So your uh, your tolerance is going up now. Tolerance will be used for health later and fights and stuff like that. Um, so that's the purpose of drinking beer. You also earn a little bit of money too. Um, and, and different beers, you move on from one beer to another and they increase your tolerance. You have to choose different bars and find different beers. These things are all starting to fall into place. And a lot of them are like really ludicrous, but that's the whole purpose of the game. And uh, I'm going to wait till I've had 20 here. As you can see, it goes nuts. And I can go over the, I can order the other beer, and he delivers it over there, and it actually looks different. Let's have a little look at the beer. It looks cool. Up until the day it was a bottle. And you can talk to the people like this. He'll ask you where from. He'll ask you if you can find his hat, though he's still wearing it right now. You may remember him from earlier videos if you're a keen viewer. There's my brother. Well, I'm too wasted to talk to him, so I can order a different beer if I want. You can actually run between pints if you want to level up quicker. So I've leveled up on heavy heavy Kelly. And get Hep Scott. See, I earned 10 daggers in the corner there. Daggers are the currency of the game. And now you see here's, uh, here's the Hep Scott. And I could unlock this one too, although I don't need to. And I'm pretty wasted now, as you can see. Now, when you're wasted, well, you can go uh, for a joint at this weed bot here. Oh, well, see, it's not working right now because I'm wasted, actually, because of a bug, but it usually gives you a joint which you actually can smoke. Um, you can also order now at this... Uh, salad place, and it can give you what's on the menu, as you see there, but blue, and you can pick one. If you pick one that is particularly uh, rotten, 
like the Car Cromwell Tonian Special, something that you wouldn't want to drink after you've, uh, wouldn't want to eat after you've had 20 pints of lager, then you can uh, order them all like that, actually. Then what happens is, after 60 seconds, you have to rush to the toilet. Um, and there's these special toilets around here, owned by uh, a company, a waste disposal company who are useless, called Chunk Blower. So now if you find a toilet, you can just get the preamble out of the way, because it tells you that toilets need to be trained with, you know, a, a nasty dump. And because you've had loads of beer and you've had the dodgy food and stuff, you can uh, you can train toilets, like, you can improve their performance by you know, using them. And you can do this for Chunk Blower and they will actually, you know, reward you eventually. You can work for Chunk Blower too as well, outside of doing this, which I'll show trusty steed is in need of attention this one so I've got a, another minute or so uh, so I'm gonna go over and have a look at the chunk blower thing I was talking about where you can work for them I'm still hammered whoa if I, I'm fully powered up right so I can just uh, go crazy in the air like that to get anywhere I want Oof. and this is gonna be the Chunk Blower Discovery Museum around here. Uh, some toilets in here and there's a little balcony at the end and that. Um, but at the top there's actually an office where they recruit people. And he asks you, uh, when you go to him, he says he was, you know, he used to be desperate to work with Chunk Blower and work with us, I've got some work coming up. And then he tells you to go and unblock um, some pipes. Oh wait, see that? It, it, you missed it there because it briefly said, but it, they've cut off, but it actually said all that alcohol and uh, food is messing with your bowels. Get to a toilet quickly. It was cut off by him, but uh, I need to fix that sort of thing. So I've got to get to the toilet now. Nothing actually will happen, but in the game it would be like, you know, kind of like being in pain. And your bowels would be grunting and then you can get to the toilet and uh, actually like you can't probably do anything yet but you basically you can sit on the toilet like that and then you know there'll be a cutscene of a guy having a dump you won't see him actually having a dump you know? you'll just see like you know something like that but and then he's trained it and he's done there uh, and that's actually caused um, some shit going on in the sewers, pardon the pun, which is causing cockroaches to come up and go to this guy's office that my crosshair's on now. He's one of your mates. Well, he is right now. Probably won't be. So he asks you for help in a minute to kill the cockroaches. But for now, this is the chunk blower mission we were looking at where it says, uh, can you go and check what's blocking the pipe? And when you go in here, you, <laughs> you, you find that there's a, well, a rabbit doing cocaine. Where's the cocaine? Oh, trust me, there's definitely cocaine there in, in the real build, unless I've fucked it up. Um, well, not a rabbit, a squirrel. Uh, and there's an underground. There he is asking for help. So he wants you to get some. <laughs> he says uh, something really vile has forced them out. I think that was you on the toilet, obviously. And he wants you to get some poison to go and kill them, which I'll do in a minute. But you can see what's blocking it here as a as a rat stuck in there, and he asks you for help. In fact, he's the one who tells you uh, to use the toilet to get him to splash him through. So the, the order is wrong a bit here. Um, but you know, I'll fix that. And if you go around the corner here, there's the two little snails. There's actually a DJ, and it's not obviously it's all over the place. This because I'm still drunk. There's a DJ like playing an underground set in the middle of this sewage pipe and uh, a little rat who asks you for drugs and this place is going to be jam-packed full of non-human revelers I would say and you can free him obviously like I was saying and then you go back to Trumplow and you get uh, you get money for that also you can you can drink in here if you want whatever he serves 
there'll be some sort of uh, drink that you can increase your tolerance with. Um, now to get out, it's actually locked, but there's a thing here. Right, so that was the underground club. Well, there's a little torch here as well I was playing with. I don't know if it works in the build. Yeah. I was going to make it so you bring that down there anyway. That toilet had been well and truly trained. Um, let's have a look at some of the other things you can do. Anger, anger the Chinese people by wrecking their place. This is going to be a Chinese area. Everyone's going to do in barbecue and make nice food and stuff like that, which is all floating right now. That should flip off the table, of course. There's Frisky Tom's, which is like a massage parlor. You can actually buy Frisky Tom's off this guy for 100,000 and uh, it's yours. Over here you can actually meditate with a, with an old man but he's not around right now so I'll leave that for now. Um, what the hell was that? We're going to look back at uh, JK's little bar. Whoa! That's a bug. Because there's a little outdoor garden now. And he shouldn't be walking through the walls there. Um, and you can actually find some money. And the money of the game is called Daggers. You can find some there. And uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit to do all of a sudden. If you go down here, this is the white elephant. And you talk to this guy, he's really depressed because he, he's into his cacao and they can't get any but over here there's a coffee shop who well a, a coffee shop stroke hot chocolate stroke cacao place where you talk to him and he's like oh you know we can't open because a blender's broken and you can't get in but if you go and get the parts for the blender which is down by the guy actually it's the guy who asked you for help with the cockroaches and you can get from behind the bar here, whoa, you can get uh, an insect poison grenade to bring to him. Oh yeah, you need to power down when you're doing things like that so you don't go crazy. I haven't quite worked out the mechanics of that yet. I'm drinking more beer there. Um, you can get to this guy's place, which is kind of secret, by going through here. These stairs shouldn't be here, so you can walk right through them for now. And he's uh, he's like a junk kind of guy, collects loads of crap and <coughs> codes and makes robots and that. But actually, in here you can get take parts from his grinder, and then you can bring them back to that coffee shop, which I'll do in a minute. But his place should be infected by cockroaches. That was what he called you about earlier. See, there's like loads around. I can't put too many because it slows it down. But before I had it awesome, but I've reduced them a lot, but there's still a lot, and they crawl up the walls and stuff. Uh, where are they? Yeah, maybe I need a few more, uh, or whatever, but you should see that they're, they're scarpering around, trying to fly and that, and being generally disgusting like real cockroaches. And before I saw them clambering up walls and that. Anyway, at this point you can use the grenade to get rid of them. Although I haven't developed that section yet. That's what I would be doing now if, if it wasn't this time. I'm ready to go for a drink. But next bit is going to be to put the grenade in there. And then set it off and leave. And it will just smoke the place out basically. And you can warn him or not. If you don't warn him he like nearly dies. And, like... If you do warn him, he, he gets out, fine. Um, you can chat to this guy as well. So if I talk to him, he's a typical coder who doesn't look at you, he just carries on coding. But uh, he says you can take whatever you find. And then he goes for a walk. There he is, off for his walk, and when he's away you can take what you want.
Well, you can take what you want even when he's there, really. And up here he has uh, like all these screens and that and software and emulators going on. But what we want is... All right, mate, he's back. What we want is this thing. You can't see it. It's so dark, but it's a stick of dynamite. And we use that in another mission, which is not fully done. But that's Armitage, basically. That's what he's called, Armitage, and his, that's his place, the Armitage Chop Shop. Um, still some cockroaches around. There's an Amiga CD32 on the ground with a copy of Zombie Mask next to it. <coughs> For the keen Amiga fan, there's another one there, a reference. Arcade of a game I made when I was young. <coughs> so... What else can we do? We've got this owl who hums. Uh, I've got this horrible thug who sticks his finger up at you. Go on, do it, mate. Hey! You can rip these posters down, although they don't disappear yet. As I demonstrated before, you can order different types of food. These are all you know, rancid types of food. There isn't much... Uh, I don't know why it's doing that, flickering. There isn't much good food available around here because it's such a strange alien world. <coughs> what they like is not what we want. You can see the uh, colours are all beautiful. Can I get one of these yet? No, no, it's because I bought them two beers and the, and the code thinks that the beers are joints, so it won't let me buy any more. And the sound on that doesn't work, I'm not sure why. <coughs> can ask this guy, <coughs> oh, we did ask him and he wants his hat back. So, for example, I know where his hat is. <coughs> Down here. Down this alleyway, everywhere's got street names now too, that's Spicer Lane. And you get to a club called the Wallon Club, which you can't get into yet. <coughs> <coughs> and there is the hat that he's after, because he was drinking here last night. Um, you can hear this guy make some weird noises. And there's a sort of Chinese district down here, you can go in that restaurant. It's not in this build at the moment though. These signs are all quite generic Chinese, need to be fixed up. And then that takes you right back into Epoch. What else is there to demonstrate? Well, he was he was humming until the day, but I think I had to turn it off. It was just getting me too annoyed. <coughs> well, there was the horsey. Where did he go? There he is. Oh, he's just jumped off there. Don't know if that's right. Oh! Yeah, he's a bit bugged, but he goes into Germans. <clears throat> and that could be the bulk of the uh, new functionality. Oh, he's about to go and uh, meditate, so I'm going to go and meditate with him. This is a secret, really. You're not meant to sort of know to do this because it's so complicated. And you have to go in after him, too. So, he goes in, it's pretty dark though around here at the moment, and you come in, and you sit down with him, and you get in the corner and meditate with a legend, <coughs> you do that for 30 seconds, <coughs> sorry for all the coughing, it's ludicrous, there's mosquitoes around here too, you know, buggers. Not in the game, I mean in real life. You can't hear it there, but it says meditate with a legend. Just, you know, uh, placeholder stuff. I don't know why it's not playing. But I also earn ten dollars, and you don't hear the music for that. Or ten daggers. Now, there's one more thing. There's chill out spots you can go to. 
No, I haven't showed the coffee shop being opened either. But JK's have a place out here. And if you go, there's already a guy chilling out there. If you go over there, or well, you can use the bridge if you want. You get into what they call a chill out spot, you can see in the corner. <coughs> Just designed to allow you to relax and take in some of the scenery. Also gives you points, so if you stay here for 30 seconds, you can crouch if you want, you know, if you want to feel like you're really lying back. Then you get um, points. <coughs> and unlocking uh, different chill out spots gives you probably more money and maybe something else as well, you know, rather than just that. He's really liking standing on those chairs. Get off the chairs. Who do you think you are? Earring and everything. Not that I have anything against people with earrings. Right. Oh. Well, that looks like a bug, look. I wondered where they were. They're all crashed in midair. Insects crashed in midair. Um, so, yeah, I'll go back to the coffee shop. And, um... Well, you heard the sound there. Why did it work there? Well, that's what it sounds like. So that guy who he was pissed off, he's still pissed off. But now I've got the working grinder parts. <coughs> I can give them to him. He fixes the grinder. And then the shop is open. And then because the shop is open, the other guy hears about it and comes down. So now I can go in, you see. I earned 100 daggers for that. Uh, not bad at all. And this is a weird kind of coffee shop in the sky. You can see some mad views of the city. Good way to not have another scene too. It just feels right. It was meant to go into the wall over there and have a new scene, but uh, it feels nice like this. I just I dreamt this up when I, I was trying to get rid of some of this tubing just because it was messing up something on the level above because of some shader stuff. And I deleted it and thought, oh, that could be cool. And lots of things uh, happen that way. You come up with one mission idea and you and you think of six or seven more to uh, to get to it. And that's how you get all these cool things happening. So there he is. Look, Tumnus on roids, he's called. He has, uh, he has a massive penis, actually. He, but he is well into his hot chocolate, or cacao, as they call it, sometimes somewhere some people and he now knows so he goes uh, he goes to the hot regards this is called which is now open and he's pretty ha he's thankful so he invites you to a cacao ceremony you can ask him that now actually but I want to wait till he goes in and uh, yeah like I said, a lot of this is extraordinarily strange and different, but uh, it's what it is, you know. What's the point in trying to make GTA 6 on your own? Might as well make it absolutely ludicrous. And it might apply to, you know, a certain market that would never be available, would never be allowed to make. You'd never be allowed to make a game like this, is what I'm saying, if you had a publisher. And I've been there before, I've had things killed by publishers. Right, <clears throat> you talk to him. He apologizes. These are all going to be improved. That's my uh, phone beeping. Uh, so it gives you a token of appreciation, an invitation to a cacao ceremony. Now, if you look this stuff up, it's, it's pretty funny stuff. Um, so I'll just, well, you can, there's an island over there you can get to uh, and have this ceremony. A few bits of new deco here. If you notice, the reflections are all working. High, highly expensive, but they are working. That is Aquas, uh, with an option called Ignore Culling. Some new stuff here. I need to swap the monitors out for better, different things. Um, yeah. Some more drinks around to represent the fact that most people are, are just getting drunk all the time. Um, you'll be able to swim in there soon. 
think that's pretty much it. If you've made it this far in my nonsensical game world, full respect. Well, this little cat as well wants you to walk me home, but my nav meshes are broken, so it's not happening right now. Alright, that is pretty much how it's going. Um, adding more missions and making it more interactive all the time, trying to make it so it's, there's something to do everywhere you go all the time um, and you know much getting much less cool cyberpunk and more ludicrous cyberpunk or ludicrous future world um, but this is just the way things are evolving after uh, it's been five years now and everything is carefully evolved so I'm not fighting any part of the evolution uh, I'm just going with the flow and obviously well me and my friend are basically co-writing a lot of this so we sit around we have drinks and we come up with these crazy ideas and we laugh about them we add them to the ideas document <coughs> the ideas document is about you know 5,000 lines long or something now with these things and a lot of these ideas have come up when we're drunk or just discussing something and having a laugh so it, uh, there's a lot of humor in it too like uh, type of humor that people might get into over playing it you know it could be it's never going to be mainstream super popular uh, but it could be cult popular maybe people will like it it's hard to say you know you get you get nervous when you think about it um, but you're nervous that like no one likes it sometimes you have days where you're like god this is rubbish what am I doing really not happy about this and then the next day you're like wow this is amazing what, what was I talking about um, and I'm in an up period right now I had a down period a couple of weeks ago but it didn't last that long maybe two three nights which is not bad in five years um, but still you know you've got to rush to get these things finished because there is that fear that somehow one day the passion will be gone it's the greatest fear of artists I assume alright that's enough babbling from me uh, but you can almost go in here too yeah that's enough babbling thank you for watching